So, you're going to buy your first scuba tank. That's good. But, before you do, there's some questions you want to answer to make sure you are spending your hard-earned money as wisely as possible. These include, is now the right time to be buying a scuba tank? If so, how many tanks do you need? Also, what size scuba cylinder is the right size for you? And finally, should you be thinking about aluminum or steel? The answers to these questions will vary depending on who you are, where you live and dive, and on the type of diving you anticipate doing. Let's take a look at each of those questions in greater detail. Although scuba cylinders are often among the first purchases new divers think they need to make, they may well be among the last. Remember that it generally costs little more to rent a tank than it does to get one filled. If you do most of your diving at destinations you can only reach by air, you'll discover that it's not only impractical to travel with scuba cylinders, but also that use of tanks and weights is already included in your dive package. Remember also that unlike other more personal pieces of dive equipment, comfort and fit are generally not issues when running scuba cylinders. For most divers, there are several other equipment purchases they should make before investing in scuba cylinders. These include mass snorkel and fins, a personal dive computer, comfortable and adequate exposure protection, and a complete scuba system including BC and regulator. For most of these items, comfort, fit, and familiarity are essential meaning that you're better off with personal equipment that you own rather than unfamiliar rental equipment that may not fit properly. That having been said, depending on circumstances, there may be compelling reasons to own your own cylinders instead of continuing to rent. These include the right size cylinder is not readily available for rental. Your dive center is still some distance away making that additional trip to return rental cylinders expensive in terms of both time and travel. The satisfaction of simply owning all of your own equipment. The overall convenience of not having to rent anything. The typical day of local diving for most divers involves two dives. For example, the most common type of dive charter is a two-tank boat dive. This is why most divers will want to own more than one tank. Doing so will save you the inconvenience of having to rent a second or even a third cylinder. By far the most common cylinder used by recreational divers is an 11 liter aluminum model that holds roughly 80 cubic feet of air or nitrox at its rated pressure of 3000 psi or a little more than 200 bar. Among the reasons for its popularity is the fact this tank provides adequate bottom time for most divers without putting them at substantial risk of exceeding the no decompression limits. However, just because a particular cylinder meets the needs of most divers doesn't mean it meets the needs of every diver. For example, many younger or shorter divers find the standard 11 liter aluminum 80 to be uncomfortably tall. For these divers, a shorter cylinder, such as the 9 liter aluminum 63, may be a better fit while providing more than sufficient gas. The other side of the coin are those recreational divers for whom the most common cylinder sizes fail to provide sufficient gas. Larger divers, for example, tend to have gas consumption rates that are in direct proportion to their size and, as a consequence, 
may prefer cylinders which are more in line with their height and weight. Divers who spend considerable time in deeper water may also want the added safety margin that larger cylinders can offer. It's important to understand, however, that the largest aluminum cylinders currently available are 13 liter aluminum 100s. If you need more gas than this, it may be time to consider a different type of cylinder, which leads to the final question you need to ask. Opinions vary as to which is better, but in reality, it depends entirely on circumstances. To better decide, you need to understand the fundamental differences between steel and aluminum cylinders. Steel tanks are available in a wide variety of sizes. There are steel tanks with largely the same internal capacities as the most popular aluminum models, as well as ones with substantially larger volumes, such as a 19 liter monster capable of holding nearly 150 cubic feet of gas at a rated pressure of more than 3400 psi or nearly 240 bar. Aluminum cylinders tend to have more metal at the bottom as this allows the tanks to stand upright without a tank boot. This can tend to make divers more tail heavy. In contrast, divers often praise steel cylinders for their excellent fore and aft balance characteristics. By far the biggest difference between steel and aluminum cylinders is this. Steel cylinders can rust. Aluminum cylinders cannot. Moisture that gets inside an aluminum cylinder may cause only a minor amount of oxidation or scale and will not likely cause any permanent damage. Even salt water getting into an aluminum cylinder will not cause significant corrosion. In contrast, even a small amount of fresh water getting inside a steel cylinder can cause a significant amount of damage if not caught in time. With salt water, the corrosion occurs even faster. If left unchecked, the resulting oxidation and pitting can damage a cylinder beyond repair. Epoxy coated steel cylinders can also trap moisture between the external coating and the tank wall. This can lead to unseen damage. If you do a substantial amount of diving in salt water and aluminum cylinders are available in sizes that meet your needs, you may be better off sticking with aluminum. On the other hand, if you dive mostly in fresh water or you need the additional capacity, better overall balance and more compact size and can provide the higher level of care and maintenance these cylinders require, you may be happier with steel. Your local SDI dive center can help you weigh the variables and decide which is the right choice for you. To find your local SDI retailer, just visit www.tdisdi.com.